Good day to everyone. This is in my channel with the best first hand information for startup founders and tech entrepreneurs. And today we have a very special guest. He's the global ambassador of Berkeley University Skydeck Accelerator. He's also the founder of Strategic Value Ventures and angel investor himself. And at the same time, he has amazing experience in the consulting, working with Tesla IPO, with Big Four, and a lot of corporate clients. So he has few hats in parallel, head of investor, head of startup, head of corporate, head of consultant and advisor. Meet this unique person, Karen Gülbudayan. Hi, Karen. Hello. Hello, everyone. Karen, thank you so much for taking your time and being with us today. My first question is, can you tell a little bit more about your role as global ambassador? I know that you were the very, very first person who was invited to this unique role at the Berkeley Accelerator, where many startup founders want to get in, but don't know how to do it. So what is Global Ambassador, will you be their, their advisor to get into this accelerator? So uh, let me start a little bit about the background. So uh, my history with uh, Skydeck, Berkeley Skydeck goes back to 2017, when uh, it was a very interesting time for both myself and for Skydeck itself. And I joined initially as an advisor, and over the period of time, uh, it became very tight, very strategic uh, partnership between myself and Skydeck. Uh, and uh, as the Skydeck grew, as it became one of the top uh, global accelerators, uh, the needs and definitely uh, opportunities grew, and uh, that's kind of how this advisory role also evolved into a very unique uh, opportunity to represent officially Skydeck on the global arena, promote the brand, uh, and tell the stories, tell why this particular organization, why this particular place is quite special, why this particular model works really well for especially global uh, founders who are coming from outside of US but they have big aspirations, they have big goals, and they want to promote their product, their technology across the globe. So this is uh, merging uh, and connecting, essentially, creating this very special type of cross-border ecosystem and opportunity, like a bridge. It, it is a bridge, like to tell the story from the standpoint of Skydeck, at the same time, promote the needs, uh, the challenges which uh, our startups, global startups are facing, and how we can really merge and meet and uh, promote this uh, understanding and find the best fit for global startups within UC Berkeley community ecosystem. So before we start with UC Berkeley, Skydeck, let me give you a little bit context. Uh, first of all, when people hear UC Berkeley, um, definitely it's a well-known name. Uh, to understand, UC means University of California. And U University of California is, uh, is a system where uh, is a system or affiliation of 10 different universities, well-known. Definitely one is in Berkeley, uh, which is one of the top research universities in the uh, world. And by the way, it's a public university. It's been around for roughly eight years. However, um, the program evolved tremendously, I mean, especially over the last three years. So what happened uh, in 2017? Uh, by being like a classical incubator accelerator for any university, uh, it decided to go global. So uh, typically universities create this for internal 
kind of ecosystem for alumni, for faculty, for students, right? Uh, UC Berkeley Skydeck decided, let's open up our acceleration program for global founders because we wanna be different. Our motto is we shoot to the moon, we want the best of the best, definitely. Another aspect of what happened in 2017, uh, Skydeck Fund was created. So that means any company, global company, which is accepted to acceleration court of Skydeck will be receiving investment of $100,000. And uh, for roughly 5% equity, which is also very different, special. But again, as we will discuss, this is not the main benefit or not the only benefit of this entire program. So program is designed uh, as follows. Uh, it's six months program. And uh, to understand the program, it accepts every six months, roughly 150 companies. So the program 150 companies are um, broken down into three areas. Let's call it areas. One is acceleration. Roughly 20 to 25 companies, uh, either from internal uh, UC system or global founders can access or can compete to become part of this cohort. And this is highly competitive environment to get into 20, 25 uh, cohort companies. The acceptance rate is roughly 1% nowadays. So just tell you how competitive it is. Uh, the second one, so it's open for global companies. The second one is called Global Innovation Partners. And this is relatively new, roughly one year old uh, program because we do understand uh, we have a lot of value to offer, especially for global uh, partners, but not every company can compete and access our ecosystem. So uh, considering this opportunity, we work with uh, certain partners across the globe who uh, are interested to jumpstart their own ecosystem in their own country. So they have opportunity to send number like up to eight teams to Skydeck. Definitely it's uh, for payment. There is still selection process, but it's not as competitive as for example, um, the first one, acceleration program. However, these teams receive uh, most of the benefits of the acceleration program. Uh, they interact with the same uh, acceleration uh, startups from around the world. They uh, have access to all the benefits and resources what uh, Skydeck can offer. And the third one uh, is incubator, incubation program. Uh, is still uh, open only for UC affiliate uh, companies. It means you need to be alumni or you need to be uh, faculty or staff. Uh, and if you have a idea, if you ready in the process developing some startup, uh, it's still a competitive process, but you may have access to all the resources and opportunities which you see Berkeley Sky that can offer you. And it's a bulk, still 100, probably 10 companies every six months are coming into Excel incubator program. It's called Hotdesk. So I hope this uh, gives you a perspective. So acceleration is open for global companies, individual companies. GIP is open to global partners who can bring their own uh, global startups and incubation is still open only for UC system affiliate, UC Berkeley, UCLA and others. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that uh, is quite clear. Thank you, Karen, for uh, explaining this in such a way. And I think for this uh, interview, 
uh, the most interesting ones will be acceleration, global acceleration and uh, uh, GIP. Uh, because uh, the incubation program, if it is for alumni mostly, uh, I guess majority of startup founders who will be watching this interview, they are uh, not yet alumni of uh, the Berkeley ecosystem. Uh, can you please elaborate a little bit more about this uh, GIP system? What kind of partners are accepted and how, how actually uh, uh, startup founder can find these partners? What are the criteria? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I get a lot of questions whether uh, individual startup can pay uh, and essentially come and join GIP and uh, it's not the intent. So intent is, let's say in uh, country XYZ country, there is either government or uh, private entity which is developing or interested, let's say uh, some accelerator or university right? And they have resources, they have pipeline of startups. What they need, they need access to what I call environment of support, uh, to advisory network, to uh, practical business skills, to knowledge, which uh, they still, I mean, they are in big need, right? Because they want to develop uh, what I also describe as globally enabled entrepreneurs and to uh, provide this type of knowledge, you need influx of expertise and experience. And most important aspect of this process will be to send your teams for three, four months program to Skydeck, where they have opportunity to go through intensive training program. But the biggest part of this, or the benefit is to have intensive in immersive conversations uh, with potential customers, with uh, venture capital, with uh, advisors. And this is happening uh, roughly around the clock. So you can imagine after three months, it, it's really transformative experience. When they come back, they have quite different uh, capabilities and skills. This is not theoretical. I mean, just seeing the success stories which are consistently coming out in very short period of time, like within two years, it's just a bulk of companies which really made a significant difference, not only for themselves, but their communities, their ecosystems from like roughly 40, 50 countries around the world. So to be part of the GIP program, first and foremost, you need to have a big partner which uh, has resources, financial resources to pay for the program. And uh, they have a pipeline, they, they can send up to eight teams. So, but those teams needs to be uh, in what I call advanced stage, means uh, um, they beyond prototype stage. They are doing, they probably already have some traction in terms of revenue. They, uh, uh, considering strategic entrance to, let's say, U.S. market or any other markets, or are they planning to raise funding from Silicon Valley and other U.S. investors, which is quite rigorous and very uh, different process. So that's uh, a GIP program. And again, as I mentioned, GIP program offers most of the benefits to these teams which acceleration program uh, will offer. And we'll discuss what acceleration program offers. So uh, acceleration program, again, is open to anyone from any country. Uh, we're talking right now uh, about the acceleration program, which is perfect timing because on the 8th of July, the new application uh, stage will be open so teams can go and apply online. Guys, we will put the link to the application form right here under this interview. So just go click and uh, uh, good luck. So what do you need to know about uh, the acceleration uh, program? As I mentioned, it's six months program. When you apply, uh, usually you have about one month to apply for the program. And 
you typically need to be um, in beyond MVP or uh, prototype stage. We like companies which are in deep technology, which are doing something very uh, deep in terms of tech. It could be AI, biotech, uh, computer vision, but by no means that's the only thing. There is no uh, restriction in terms of what kind of companies we're looking at. We're looking definitely at the best and the brightest, the high potential companies. And there could be in uh, various industries, so it's very industry agnostic. We have hardware companies, we have robotics companies. In our cohort, we have even uh, airspace companies. We had uh, some consumer companies, but that's probably um, now less than 10%, I would estimate. Um, we have companies who are uh, really driving very unique also business models. They may not have really deep technology at the same time, they have uh, unfair advantage when it comes to how they develop and uh, advance in their own markets. Um, also very important, especially for global founders, it's important to understand that if you develop some product or technology for your uh, local uh, market, it needs to be relevant and also in demand of people in uh, markets across the globe, right? So it, it seems like common sense, but it's very important to note. So the process is as follows. You apply to the program. There is application. You need to submit also include your pitch deck uh, with very specific uh, there are some guidelines in terms of what we're looking for, but uh, as a rule of thumb, include what is the problem? Why you the great team to address this? I mean, what is really unique about your uh, solution, about your team, about your uh, other circumstances and what kind of traction you had? Uh, whether if it's deep technology or uh, some innovation, do you have any patents? So all this information uh, is described and um, what I do as um, ambassador and uh, as part of also strategic value ventures, which I'll describe later, we help also to prepare some of the teams for this process. So once you apply, uh, there is a selection process which consists of three stages, essentially. The first stage, we last time we received over 1,600 applications uh, from uh, around the world. And uh, as you can imagine, it's quite, uh, I mean, it's amazing uh, the quality and sheer number of these applications which we received. As part of the selection committee, uh, I've seen um, just um, how even the process evolved, like in comparison from last three years. So once we start reviewing this application, there is a scoring process in the top, I would say 100, 120 application will advance to the next, we call it first round. And during the first round, these teams will be invited to uh, uh, pitch their product within um, th they are given about 40 minutes which consist of two parts one will be about the team about the culture of the team and second will be primarily about this uh, product the problem the product solution in some q a session uh, considering we are in covid 19 environment it will be virtual usually we like to see in person. The teams which are selected from, uh, which advance from the first round, they go into the final round and the process will take roughly one hour for the interview process. At this point in the past, we wanted to see at least one of the founders in person. And um, it's, as I mentioned, it's very rigorous process. You expect uh, 
uh, I mean, after all these years, I'm still surprised what kind of questions and what kind of, it's never like, um, it, nothing is trivial in terms of like, questions may start after the second minute or uh, because the advisors and the team from Skydeck are well prepared. These are people who are coming from all the sites, from all the industries. I can't imagine any other place where you have in one room concentrated the experience and expertise like of hundreds of hundreds of years from uh, experience running uh, startup as a CEO, fundraising or um, executive of top companies, global companies. I mean, it's a Silicon Valley. It's a concentration of the capital and concentration of expertise of where no one else and never else you can find, right? So, and it's in one room. People also connect uh, via Zoom and uh, other means. So it's very rigorous process. It's, you can expect something which you haven't experienced before. And it's for very good reason. Teams which are advancing to cohort, which are selected for the cohort, you know, it ranges from 20 to 25, depending on the uh, uh, year. They are receiving 100,000 in investment. And this is very important piece because um, like many accelerators uh, or incubators across the Europe and other places, uh, when we're talking about the investment, this is the money, the cash which companies receive. It's not like I got 100,000, but um, I had to pay for the services. So company is receiving 100,000 for equity in the company. And this is very important because uh, we have skin in the game. We are developing and providing uh, uh, value which uh, surpasses all the expectation. It transforms these teams. So in the first four to six weeks, these teams uh, will be undergoing very intense uh, training program, which is done by partners, by um, uh, uh, executives and uh, advisors, again, from various industries on various topics. Also within the first four to six months, the teams will be selecting their own advisors. So it's like a speed date, four to five different or even six uh, sessions with different advisors, which... Uh, so they can choose any and... Uh, so the process works the following way. I mean, we're trying to be relevant for the teams because we ask teams ahead of the time what they need, what, their goals with their milestones, proposed milestones. And based on their asks and based on their stage, we are saying, we would like you to meet, let's say this list of advisors. We have over 250 different advisors. And at any time, the team may uh, meet somewhere between 30 to 40 different advisors. And out of these uh, advisors, they uh, list top five. And on the side of the advisors, we also have, what are your top five companies you'd like to work with? So this is a process for what we call key advisors. And this is also another differentiator about uh, Skydeck. Uh, key advisor will be like, share, like a guide for your team for the next six months, for the next five to six months. So they will be your champion. They will be guiding you and you can choose up to three uh, different advisors with specialties in uh, business, in technology, marketing, I mean, you name it, right? And this team, uh, it's very important because they are looking at your progress. They are checking on your uh, asks right and also they communicated with communicating with other advisors we have monthly call of advisory call where all the advisors connect and we share what's going on with each individual company so this is the progress these are the asks and 
imagine telling the network, okay, we want to meet with uh, this particular executive or XYZ company. Who knows who has access? You have at least several people saying, I can make this happen. I can connect them. I can make the introduction or I can help them with uh, X, Y, Z, you know, steps. So this is really the powerful process. So the next four to, uh, I would say, four months uh, is the primary focus for the team to develop their capabilities by meeting um, uh, customers, by really polishing their uh, uh, product by polishing their uh, problem statement, whether there is a product market fit, right? Uh, whether someone can really say, oh, this is not just very interesting product, but this is something which I really want. This is really something which uh, is burning on my side. This is pain and I see a painkiller. I want to pay for it. So this is really the biggest, uh, I would say, goal for any startup. I hear a lot of times companies come and uh, say, oh, investor uh, X told me they are very excited about our company. Well, it doesn't mean they will be investing, right? From the standpoint of interest in investment or interest in payment for your services or products. It's a big journey and you need to make that journey. And this is reason why uh, Skydeck really makes this difference. Another important piece, during this four to six months process, I've seen, if not uh, probably all global startups, I mean, most of the companies, but all the global companies had some sort of pivot, major or small. They all changing because they really hands on, they firsthand, they see what's really the customers looking for. They really see the challenges. It's not, again, a trivial process to meet your customer. Uh, sometimes it's naive to think, okay, you will come to US, you will meet with your potential dream customer and you will make the sale. It rarely happens. Without this transformation, without really the process of designing, of putting these capabilities, you end up meeting and you hearing seemingly your customer, but you don't really uh, get the signals. You don't really understand what that means because there is a different business culture. There is a, some context. There are some information which you still need to really realize and understand. So that's the whole process. By the end of the six months, these teams are now ready. They already met with their potential customers. They're probably already selling to uh, customers, not only in the US, but globally. Uh, we've seen many, many cases of this kind. They already had uh, probably 100 different meetings with uh, VC and other angel investors during these six months. They developed relationships and uh, definitely polished the product. And at the end of the six months, we have a demo day. So demo day is also very special because it's by invitation only in uh, the room. It's usually a very big room, auditorium, uh, full of um, investors, roughly six to 700 uh, accredited investors. Uh, and usually the magic also happens in that room. Once you pitch, you, uh, you expect that between 20 to 30 people will uh, come to you with very specific either proposal or asks. Um, key aspect of, of uh, Skydeck also that after the demo day, the process doesn't stop. I mean, your relationship with Skydeck doesn't stop. As a matter of fact, it continues. It's you coming out of the system and it's becoming even tighter. If, even um, during the next round, I mean, Skydeck 
fund does sometimes follow up investments, but that's not, not the only reason. We are part of the ecosystem. We are part of a community which is very unique community. And even companies which graduated two, three years ago are still part of this ecosystem. We still post, um, send newsletters to half a million of alumni in Berkeley. We have post, we have uh, communication with other partners. So I uh, hope uh, uh, this gives a little bit sense or what Skydeck is. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds amazing what you've just described. I'm only uh, guessing why uh, you keep discreet uh, during uh, such a long time, uh, those advantages. And uh, also, can you please elaborate a little bit more on the main difference between, uh, for example, Berkeley Accelerator and uh, other accelerators in San Francisco or Silicon Valley? Right. So let's understand what is unique. So first of all, Skydeck is quite unique for several reasons, but I'll put uh, key aspects. First of all, it's, it's on the foundation of the top research university. It's a proximity to the Silicon Valley, right? And it's open to global founders. So let's, uh, People uh, think about Stanford, right? So Stanford is one of the, I mean, it is the top research university as well. Proximity, it's in the Silicon Valley, but it's not open to global founders. So let's make a first distinction. Second, uh, as I mentioned, it's based on, it's on the foundation of the top research university. So big thing uh, why I started this years ago and uh, one aspect which I've been helping, the bridge which I've been building between European, post-Soviet Union and other, uh, and Skydeck, the bridge, right? Uh, between, uh, for these startups was we have um, really treasure trove of uh, bright minds, of uh, really highly technical, founders, uh, new innovations. What they're missing, what they're lacking is this uh, environment of support, as I mentioned. They're lacking the practical business skills, the, uh, the experience, right? How to develop business around technology. So first of all, I'm helping to connect these dots. The best of the business minds, business world, environmental support which uh, Skydeck uh, provides and also bringing this really what I call raw diamonds, right? Finding these raw diamonds, polishing them, bringing and really within very short period of time, the value skyrockets, the capabilities of the team skyrocket. And if you detect company, let's say in uh, Armenia, in, uh, uh, in UK, right? You want, first and foremost, you want access to the top talents, top uh, minds in that field. So one example, a uh, very specific example are, um, I'll give you an example of Super Annotate AI. Super Annotate is a company uh, which develop technology, which is super fast pixel annotation technology. So two brothers, PhDs, Vahan and Tigran. Uh, uh, Vahan made this PhD in Sweden, right? So in, at some point, they decide to develop company, to start the company, Super Annotate. Within several months, they came to Silicon Valley, to Skydeck. Uh, met with, uh, at Skydeck connected with uh, kind of this really big network, huge network. And the benefits for the company after six months, they not only raised the funding, they got some funding, but the big part of uh, the benefits, the team was able to connect with the top, let's say legends in computer vision, professors and postdocs in uh, UC Berkeley. 
they not only connected this team of, of uh, professors and postdoc, they join as advisors to the company. I mean, imagine the value and imagine the potential which it created. Within six months, the team already uh, was selling to global com customers within six months. Uh, they just announced uh, around 3 million round from top VCs. And uh, I mean, it's just one of the stories which really resonates the value. So you're not only looking for investment. So big problem, big problem, which uh, global founders are facing by coming to US. As I mentioned, sometimes there are some naive uh, views that will come to US and will find investors, will find the customers. I'm, I don't want to say it's impossible, right? However, it's very uh, long, very expensive and um, uncertain journey. Why? Because what's usually happened when you come to US when, as a global founder, as a team, no one really knows about you. There is kind of definitely a gap of trust and reputation, right? So the key aspect is leverage. I like this word leverage. How you can leverage your assets, your capabilities by really building something very fast and very big, quite unique, right? Um, so by combining these two aspects together, so what Skydeck provides, which is really, um, I would say many uh, or most of the founders realize of the period of time, but, and it's not uh, visible, I would say, from the beginning. It's bridging the gap of trust and reputation. By being part of Skydeck uh, or Berkeley Skydeck ecosystem, right away the acceptance of your company, the pitch which you do, even your presence, by saying I am Berkeley Skydeck company, right away opens a lot of doors, gives you at least a chance for serious consideration. Because now you have backing, you have people who are working tirelessly, who are supporting you, who are guiding you, who are developing you as a company, as a founder, right? So uh, investors, the companies, they now know that by betting, by working with you as a company, they have the best of the best. Someone is supporting you. This is the environment of support which I'm talking about. Right. So right away, it changes the paradigm. It changes, it shifts the paradigm quite quickly and dramatically. Every company which comes to Skydeck, they um, realize again, big values, not only in terms of valuation goes up. Uh, again, the most important piece is capability. What you can do after six months. As an investor, I mean, I'm looking at the company, not what you do right now, but what can you do in the next months, years, right? What can you develop, what you can uh, achieve? Does this make sense? Uh, absolutely, Karen. Uh, but I just want to understand better. So uh, about the portrait of the founder who will be accepted to the acceleration program. You mentioned that only 1% of those who apply get the chance to be accepted. And uh, can you please uh, help our founders, our viewers to understand if they match or not? You mentioned unique business model, okay, but what else? What actually makes you win the game and uh, get accepted? So that's definitely a testament to the quality and uh, really the outcome which Skydeck provides. It wasn't 1%. I mean, when we started the process several years ago, right? So it became very uh, competitive and desirable for founders. Now, uh, to address your question, and this is again, so something which excites me all the time. There is no specific uh, formula to say, okay, you will be 
part of this or you will not be part of this. First and foremost, you need to participate. Put the best of you. Really consider, put really a lot of thoughts in terms of like how you present your case. Because it's not exercise for Skydeck. It is very important exercise for anything and everything you do as a company, as a startup, as a, found, a founder. Uh, there is definitely help uh, in, um, I do some sessions during this selection, I mean, uh, during this application process to help um, founders, global uh, community to really uh, put or kind of demonstrate the best of their abilities and best of their company, what to focus on, etc. But you need to participate. Unless you participate, no one will know. <laughs> And no, things make, yeah. The things are even uh, very much uh, surprising even to me after all these years. I mean, which company um, starts really um, slow but uh, really accelerates and really demonstrates the best during the process. So it's exciting to see evolution and really development of these companies within very short period of time, within weeks between the first presentation and today, it's a, it's a huge difference, right? Mm -hmm. So during the selection process, will startup founders mm -hmm. get feedback even if they are not selected? I mean, uh, in order to improve and apply next time. So the teams which are uh, pitching to the, the, during the first round and the final round, definitely receive a lot of feedback. And again, considering it's very intense process, like it's unimaginable, unimaginable just kind of the sheer volume of questions or range of questions, right? So um, very surprising uh, for many startup founders because they come and they don't expect this depth of uh, information or knowledge about their own companies. Advisors and selection committee has about, I mean, before they even arrive. Uh, having said that, uh, it's very friendly and um, very giving community. Mm -hmm. So when you come, they really want to help you. The uh, selection committee and uh, advisors, I mean, which is a big part of the selection committee. They're willing to give you a feedback. I mean, sometimes it's straightforward, but very important feedback. Imagine these people seen, I mean, we've seen hundreds and hundreds of different uh, companies from around the world. You can't really surprise with ideas, right? We've seen probably, I don't want to say everything, at the same time, it's just, um, beyond just any individual can really imagine. At the same time, uh, there are still things, it's part of innovation. Just be excited about uh, something new. It's maybe uh, technology, it may be the approach, it may be the quality of founders, like a totally different caliber, like how they season, what experiences they bring. Because we focus on individuals and founders too. It's a community, right? We're building community, so there needs to be a match. So Can actually, you? you are looking, even being accelerator, you are looking uh, as an investor in the teams very deeply, in the team's characters, in the founding team. Okay, and uh, what about impact factor, for example? If the startup has uh, some special impact factor, uh, which uh, increases uh, the uh, social or environmental value from this uh, technology, will it be plus, additional plus in the selection procedure? Uh, of course, so uh, having said that this is for profit, we're looking at for profit companies and we're looking from the standpoint, not only to accelerate, but there is Skydeck Fund, which also looking at, can you really be a great investment? Because every company, very important aspect uh, to realize, let me give you context. When we're looking at uh, Skydeck Fund, Skydeck Fund is 
technically legally a separate entity. It's not part of Skydeck. Uh, I mean, it's not part of UC Berkeley. At the same time, it's a very unique type of uh, public-private partnership, right? Um, fund was raised in uh, major LPs, let's call it, in this fund are top VCs from the Silicon Valley, like Sequoia, Sierra, Mayfield, right? So these are um, companies, I mean, you behind, let's say, Skydeck Fund. So Skydeck Fund has investor hat, right? They're looking at like, what can you do? How can you develop technology and what kind of business you can create, right? Which is investable. Important thing, you may be a good business, you may not be investable business. There is a big distinction. Because after six months, 12 months, you are likely to raise more funding and who will be investing in you are likely uh, top VC firms in the Valley, in the US and in, the, in Europe, right? As we discussed. And as a matter of fact, two thirds of the companies are closing within upcoming months. Two third, it's a huge number. As a, uh, are closing next round after six months or 12 months after uh, graduating from uh, Skydeck. So we're looking definitely at uh, business for profit. At the same time, if you bring also social impact, I mean, it's a big consideration for many people. So are you um, uh, looking at uh, things which can uh, impact the environment? Is your, uh, are you, is your founding team consist of women entrepreneurs, right? Because we are really focused on promoting women entrepreneurs. So all these are uh, factors, are part of consideration. But again, first and foremost, you need to be a business which is working on something very special, very different, right? And can drive and be investable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, speaking about uh, teams, uh, um, I know that a um, few teams uh, got uh, your, in your good hands before applying uh, to Berkeley Accelerator and uh, you really upgraded them, uh, advised them in a way that uh, they got a lot of value out of your um, mentorship and uh, finally they successfully got into the acceleration program and then raised uh, funds, uh, grew up and now we see these companies uh, flourishing. Um, how does it work? Can other startups also apply for, who, for example, hesitate to go directly to Berkeley Accelerator? Can they apply for your advisory or mentorship there? So let me speak a little bit about uh, strategic value ventures. As I mentioned, um, the whole purpose, it's very uh, mission-driven and purpose-driven uh, enterprise. Enough, and it came again uh, from need, the problem which I saw first in the Silicon Valley, uh, in terms of like how even venture-backed companies, most of these companies fail after a period of time. And I realized that uh, problem is not necessarily in lack of funding. There is a lot of funding. What these teams are, what these founders are missing, are missing this environment of support. And what I mean environment of support is like, who will be guiding you? Who will be helping you? Who will be your sounding board? Probably on a daily or a weekly basis, because you as a founder, as an entrepreneur, are constantly facing challenges in on the hourly on a daily basis and at some point you may have a lot of funding but if you don't have this environment of support the advisory board or uh, you have access to a community like skydeck ecosystem community right you uh, at some point prone to fail on the other side i saw major opportunities outside of us 
companies which are uh, and founders who are really technologically advanced, who are developing something very unique, and they don't have access or capabilities, opportunities to have direct communication with uh, the same um, found. I mean, uh, the founders uh, in U.S. or uh, investment community or business community, because first and foremost, there is a big difference in uh, mindset. Like, let's not deny this is a big elephant in the room and uh, it's very hard to address. What does it really mean to have really global mindset? How to really understand the business culture in the U.S.? Unless you've been uh, in that environment, in the U.S. environment, uh, dealing with talking, uh, discussing, transacting with those uh, businesses, investors, it's really hard to understand how they think, what they're looking for. And they may not, and most of the time, they're not telling you directly what the concerns or what the challenges are, what you need to do. So it's becoming very hard for the companies to enter U.S. market, right? And even the presentation wise, I mean, very simple things like writing emails, like what kind of uh, language or tone you need to use for that, right? So it, it, as basic as that. So uh, the, at the same time, there, uh, as I mentioned, there are like very good raw diamonds. So idea which I had or thesis which I had uh, several years ago how can I combine these two? How can I build this bridge between them? And um, in a way, very, in a very simple way, um, I'm a very important middleman, uh, transatlantic middleman, if you will, who on one side, very interestingly and well, uh, I mean, understand well, really well, what, for example, Skydeck, needs, what the interests are, what they're looking for, what the strategy is, right? At the same time, really uh, well understand the culture, the uniqueness, specifics, and all the challenges which global founders are facing. So that's becoming a very important link, right? How to uh, prepare the teams, at least for the pitch, right pitch, the way Skydeck is looking for and uh, may really uh, appreciate. So, but the work is not only on individual startups. The work, the, our work is also helping the ecosystem partners because the bridge, uh, if we want a really big impact, the bridge needs to be uh, universal. I mean, needs to have ability for pedestrians to walk across the bridge or for the vehicles to go around or freight trains to go across the bridge. So uh, partners who are looking for um, uh, impact in their communities, in their local countries, or uh, let's say uh, it could be a big university, it could be a big company or the government. They want to jumpstart the local ecosystem. And what's important about Skydeck, it became, it's evolving to become ecosystem driven service provider. Because imagine many companies which came from a number of countries, I mean, global. Armenia is uh, one of them, right? So six plus companies came to court, acceleration court. Now they brought back all the investments, all the skills, all the knowledge, right? They created hundreds of jobs, highly skilled, highly paying jobs in their own uh, country, in their own ecosystem. And it's profoundly changing the environment in the country. So, uh, so strategic value ventures helps on one side, the sky deck, right? Developing, advancing, promoting globally. 
At the same time, it's helping individual startups and also big partners to develop, especially develop new opportunities. How to connect very uniquely. My goal, um, my expertise in connecting dots, how we can properly and um, impactfully connect these dots so it creates synergistic value, means value which is beyond the sum of individual pieces. I absolutely agree. The synergy uh, looks like something amazing what you create there. And uh, it is a kind of complex, complex circle where you have all the dots, all the dots, all the necessary competencies, all the resources, plus industry players, plus financial resources, everything and everyone could um, wish. Um, I would love uh, to continue this interview, but I remember that time is limited. So before we finish, I have two last questions. One is very short, Karen. How do you think, um, would it be possible uh, to organize uh, a kind of Q&A session? Because I'm sure that after releasing this video, we will have a lot of additional questions from startup founders directly. Would it be possible to organize a Q&A with you uh, about uh, how to access, how to apply and uh, get selected into Berkeley Accelerator? Absolutely, uh, I would love to. So that's kind of the idea. Um, it's a general information at the same time, every company have a different perspective, different stage. So I would love to participate with your community and address some of the questions. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Guys, do, did you hear that? Uh, we will keep that in mind and don't uh, get him, uh, forget about that. So uh, we will announce uh, when uh, this Q&A session will be. So prepare your question right in the comments to this video and uh, we will collect them all and invite you to Q&A where you can ask Karen directly. Karen, and uh, the last question for today, you've uh, observed so many applications, so 1,600 only for the last bunch. Um, and uh, surely uh, there were some typical mistakes you observed, uh, which uh, made you reject uh, the startup application. Can you please uh, mention three or five most widely, uh, widely uh, met mistakes uh, from startup founders. Right, so uh, I'll, I'll mention just one. I'll mention just one, which is uh, how are you different? How are you, uh, if not unique, I mean, what are your differentiators? And it's important aspect, especially if you're in highly competitive environment. I mean, there are not many things which are on the cutting edge, probably, uh, which you're proposing. Uh, and differentiator may come not necessarily only from the technology. Okay, I uh, found or I discovered something new. It's uh, usually rare. What is really unique, it's most of the time, it's a combination of who you are. I mean, who you are as a team. So put the best of your team. Tell the story, why you so different? Because of your background, of your stories, of your uh, experiences create, put you on the track. Um, why this particular problem is really big problem. And big problem in a sense, it's not on a local scale, right? On a local scale, it may be a big problem, but why this, problem is in a way different, unique. It's a pain, and this is important piece. I mentioned this, it's a pain. It's a pain because people are willing, they recognize, they can relate to that problem, and they're willing to pay you so you can solve that problem, right? So combination of who you are, what you are solving, I mean, something relevant for the global audience. Uh, and essentially, uh, why this is big opportunity. So it could be a big problem at the same time from investor standpoint. 
again, you may be a good business, but again, from the standpoint of investor, because you're pitching to essentially investor, why you need to be investable? Why are you investable? Why what you're creating? What is your big vision? What is your big vision? Right? Are you changing the kind of the entire industry? Are you creating a new business model? Are you really disrupting the technology? So I'd like to know, and this needs to be very apparent from the first reading, from the first couple of minutes, I read your application, it needs to be apparent. Easy said than done, and this is a big uh, aspect of what I help uh, teams to do, how to strategically, um, what is the strategic narrative? How to tell the story, you have all these pieces, you may not even know you have all these pieces, but how to reveal them and how to put in a very compelling and very strong story that I really want to associate with. Even if it's not my story, if it's not my problem, I know someone who knows this more about this topic. So I definitely can refer and say, this is very interesting. Take a look at this. Mm -hmm. So differentiator uniqueness in telling the story. And uh, is it the uh, more details better or the shorter the better? Because well, no, 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 no. So exactly. So <laughs> uh, when you dealing with the application, you usually have a constraint in terms of how much you can put. Number two, short, concise, and appealing is uh, probably art. So it's. Uh, Writing short is really an art, and uh, it's a uh, it's something which is um, which is coming after practice and a lot of practice. Remember, people uh, will be reviewing many many applications. They most likely are going to spend five to ten minutes on your application, reading all these details. They usually get lost in the forest, in the trees. You're giving them trees. Show them forest. Tell them why this is really very special uh, and unique place to be. Why? Uh, give them concept. People have really short attention span these days. So from description, from the first uh, phrases, sentences, I need to know why this is very appealing. Why do I need to spend the next 10, 15, 20 minutes reading your application and really getting into? Because you are special because you are different. I want to get it from the beginning. Amazing advice. Thank you so much, Karen. Guys, remember, uh, be special. Uh, tell about your story, about big problem you are solving, and about why you are investable. And be short, clear, and laconic. Please uh, don't uh, be um, uh, in a uh, hundred pages uh, writer. Karen, thank you. You are amazing. Uh, you gave so many interesting and useful information and I'm looking forward to continue our discussion in the uh, next video in the format of webinar with Q&A and maybe also digging a little bit more into your um, other hats and roles like investor and like consultant and etc. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and have a great day. You too. Enjoy your day. Bye. Bye.